podcast is brought to you by Esther of IPA Group, bringing premier online promotion to your business. And Melanie of Stump Social Media Training, who empowers business owners to manage social media and marketing for themselves. And welcome back to the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. Today we're joined by Jade Halstead, Marketing Manager for Honcho, a search marketing agency based in England, and we're talking about content creation. Welcome, Jade. Hello. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome to be here with us. So explain why you work in content creation. Why is that your field of interest rather than anything else in marketing? So for me, content marketing is all about emotions and understanding your customer. And I absolutely love human psychology, neuroscience, um, and I love the way that it ties into marketing So for me, content is the first port of call or the first place where people are going to find you. And it's from, yeah, it's from that content that if you're doing it really well, you don't actually need to spend loads of money on advertising or et cetera. Like that organic content um, can be really powerful. So yeah, that's why, um, that's why I absolutely love it. Now, content creation typically is one of the hardest pieces of marketing that people have, isn't it? It's it's the most frequent question that I get from somebody is, what on earth do I put up? How do I put it up? How often should I put it up? Um, So how do you come to the conclusion on what kind of pieces of content are required and which platforms they go on? So... For me, it kind of you gotta go like so far back, other than to be like, let's look at Instagram and what I want to put on there. It goes so far back to like let's understand our customers on a really deep level, on all, on all, like across the board, like, and especially looking at their, at their pain problems mm-hmm. and to understand what it is you solve, rather than, I know if you're selling. I know, glasses or a mug like you don't talk about the benefits of your glasses or your mug but you're talking about the benefits that your the benefits that your product is solving or the problem that ah, so features tell to. benefits sell sorry features tell benefits sell that sort of scenario exactly and it's looking at like no one goes onto the internet and goes into google or any other social media platform and like let me look for this one particular thing, unless they're very product aware. Usually they're not. They're, it's far down that down that, um, that buyer journey. So when you can understand the problem that you're solving and the pain that they're facing in the terminologies that they would use and talking in their language, that's when you can start to create really good content. Okay, so... Instead of me saying, look at this nice mug that I have for sale, you should really buy this mug. We'd be talking yeah. about, it's so cold outside that once you get your hands around a nice warm cup of tea, you'll feel much better. And the picture is of somebody's hands around my mug. <laughs> I haven't actually said that it's my mug in the content. Is that what we're saying here? Yeah, you can be saying that. But yeah, it's, it's that problem. So if you're taking, say, a hiker... And they hike six hours to the top of a mountain and their tea's cold. Like, interview that customer, understand exactly what it is that they're facing. And then how can your product link into that? And use their wording, use their problem in your content or your advertising or whatever that is. Um, Yeah, rather than all this keeps it warm. Mm -hmm. if if that makes sense Mm -hmm. like so for an example recently I purchased so much um like (laughs) hair stuff to help my hair grow and I wasn't searching I can't remember the company that I bought it from in the end oh UK Lash I wasn't typing in UK Lash hair solution or whatever it's called I was typing in how do I get my hair to grow or how do I stop my hair from being so brittle or you know and that's my problem and the words I would use are, I absolutely hate my hair. Like, 
<laughs> it annoys me that my hair keeps falling out. It annoys me that I twiddle my hair all the time and it keeps snapping. Like, how can I stop that? Like, how can I stop my hair snapping when I twiddle it all day long? You know? Uh, so, stop twiddling it? <laughs> that's why it's in braids. <laughs> I did so, wonder. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I'd sit there twiddling it all day. And to create content around those problems, like, um, it's going. I'm going to relate with it so much more than this helps your hair grow, you know? Okay. So and, say we have like, sorry, we've got a lot of people that listen to us that are just starting out or that have really, mm-hmm. really small businesses and maybe they yeah. don't have very many customers to go and interview. Where should they start? With one customer that they have. I would say, so it doesn't need to be hundreds of customers. They It just needs to be some really in-depth questions or conversations with your customers it could even be like even 10 so there's some there's um some marketer I can't remember his name off the top of my head but says one customer interview is worth a thousand surveys it's because you can actually go into depth with that person and you can ask them about their journey ask them what their first thought was where they first started researching And then when did they go after they researched that? Like, how long did it take them to actually buy? Because honestly, it took me three months before I started buying the hair product that I wanted. So that one in-depth conversation that lasts, say, half an hour, it can be so valuable to you, but not many people do it. Hmm. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Um, it's especially when you first start with a business, you find talking to your customer is actually quite hard. Um, at, first of all, you don't want to look like you don't know what you're talking about. And secondly, you don't want to leave a lasting impression that you're unprofessional, that you mm-hmm. don't understand what their problem is. Um, and I remember... Um, I, I actually did this this questioning your client your customer. I did that four years ago, okay, um, mm. I, and that was the first time I did it. <laughs> That's completely business, true. Yeah, completely you're now in true. Business, what nine years, Melanie? Um, nine years, ten years later this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but previous to that, um, it was me guessing, mm-hmm. and. Preview and and also on top of that, it was me um, looking at testimonials, looking at testimonials and, and and seeing the language that people were saying. Oh, out of this session, I got this, this, and this. Fantastic, amazing. I was like, really? You got that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. And then I saw that you know several people were saying the same thing, and I was like interesting okay and my language changed about how I was promoting and what I was saying about my business because this is what people were actually getting out of it is that the sort of thing that you would use absolutely so there's two things I want to add here so just to the second point you need to use your buyer's language because that's what they resonate with and unless you interview like actual face-to-face or Zoom or even on the phone, have conversations with your customers. You do not know the language or the terminology they use. No one in a survey writes how they speak and they go into the depth that we need. And, yeah, the same with polls or any other way of collecting this feedback or even testimonials. Like, I don't write in a testimonial the the journey I went through, the pain I went through, the research, the YouTube videos, the <laughs> all of that, that. I don't put it into a testimonial. So you actually don't know what I'm going through from the minute I realize I have a problem or a pain that needs solving to buy in your product. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to say. I think it was along the line of people, like they, they don't interview early enough Mm. They had this fantastic product, but they market it wrong. Where you could change the way that you talk about it to to solve someone's problem, it could completely change your 
your business. It could make or break the product. So yeah. the earlier people interview, the better. Yeah, um, I remember being at a, a networking event, and it there was um, one of the guys that was that was there doing a sixty second pitch, was saying things. You know, he's he's a hypnotist. And he was saying things like, you know, I help your child get through exam anxiety. And that resonated with me as a mother who had a child going through exams. I was like, I did not know that I needed your services or maybe my child needed your services until this minute, even though I'd known him for like three, four years. I was like, how did I never twig that that was also something that you could do? You know, so it's not until somebody might have said to him, Oh, that was great. You know, you really helped my child that he then used that in his, you know, in his pitch or in his, in his marketing. And that's only then that I realized that I might have had that pain point, you know, so you never actually realize sometimes as a customer, you don't even realize what your pain points are until the company says, we help you with this. It's like, whoa, <laughs> you read my mind, you know? <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, Jade, another point I see frequently is, is and I hear about actually frequently, is how many times people should post about something. People feel very self-conscious about putting up the same content. Um, and, and how do you feel about sharing other people's content as well? Is there any relevance there? Um. You, uh, just a quick question. Are you referring to social media content right now? Social yes. media, yeah. Um, I mean, I know we could talk <coughs> about the whole marketing plethora. Mm, yeah. Um, but right now, just social media. Yeah, so I would say on that, um, there is no harm in supporting other people and sharing their content if it is relevant to your audience. You know, there is enough opportunity in this world for everyone to win if they do it properly. And I truly believe that. Um, and then in terms of sharing, share as often as you like, if you are not posting for the sake of posting. Post because it adds value. Post because your audience, audience wants to see it. Or even if they don't know they want to see it, it's going to add value to their life, to their day, to solving their problem, is what I would say. But it also, like, your social media followers only they follow you because they're aware of you mm. and they're usually aware of the problems that you solve. I feel like it gets a little trickier when you go out of the scope of people that you don't know when you're targeting new people. And that's when it gets when you have to be so spot on on the language that you're using and what you're posting. I would say that's more important than your generic social media page that that is organic and just your followers tend to see it okay so sorry you're talking up there about um the language being used should companies then use a corporate language like i'm talking companies even as sole traders solopreneurs people on their own jewelry makers candle makers should they stick to like a corporate language or should they use the language of their their customers so say you know obviously like we we build web design websites here so we could start talking jargon about css and cms and javascript and you know all these jargon words that a lot of people wouldn't understand but because that's part of our co company identity then you know, that, that's sort of the thing that, that we could talk about. Or should we just say things like um, that thingy majig that, you know, <laughs> the thing that helps you code sort of yeah. thing? You know, where do you where do you have that language? Line? So I would say it, it completely depends on your on your business. But for me, I know very small amounts of coding etc like I've done like I know I've edited a few websites in my time and it's been painful but if I wanted a website or if I wanted a new I know element or something feature added to my website I don't care what you use I don't care whether you use 
this coding or that coding or this special three letters that I actually don't know about. <laughs> what I want to know is what you're going to do for me. Like, how are you, like, you're solving my problem. So you don't need to say, I'll build you X, Y, and Z using a load of different letters thrown together because I don't know. However, if you're going to say, I'm going to solve your booking system problem by making it easier for your for you to edit your bookings, for people to book, etc., in a really simple way, or you know, whatever I need, it's that. Like, or like, you don't need to know how we solve it, but we're going to stop you pulling your hair out. You know, <laughs> when it comes to web, when it comes to website design or website creation, you know, I'm going to stop you having arguments with your spouse because you're fuming because you haven't been able to do it for the last seven hours. That's what you're solving for me. I don't care how you do it is ultimately what I would say. However, depending on the business, you may not want to say that. So it sounded like a little bit of brand persona was being brought into the conversation there. But I think how much of of being specific is, is a good thing in your messaging when you're doing content creation or I mean you're trying to understand who your customers are um, but so difficult if you've got lots of customers and I know Esther does she's got a, I'd say at least 10 customer avatars <laughs> um, so does that mean she needs to write 10 separate posts on social obviously on the right on the correct social platforms answering different specific problems they have or can we be a bit more general or will will that not work so it's, it's tricky but it's definitely worth experimenting with however I would say to make the most out of it out of your social media to try and at least target all of them at some point in that journey uh, in their journey because you don't want to start going too generic that no one cares Hmm. you know and you really do need to hone down on those on those individuals but I suppose that's where it comes when segmentation comes into this where actually your your social media could be a little bit more generic but your advertising is so targeted or your email campaigns are segmented so no one receives the same email like across your um, your personas. Like there is a different email going to each persona, or maybe two personas at the bottom of the chart are here. They get the same email, and it, it goes up in like with skill or language, or if they're similar pain points, um, is what I would say. But like I wouldn't say too generic, and I probably wouldn't say too honed in on each. Very broad answer, I know, but it's, it's worth experimenting with it. Yeah, so it's finding the happy medium. Mm. It's finding the happy point in the middle that you're not excluding some and including others. So when it comes back to content creation again, um, how often would you repurpose? Is that something you do regularly? All the time. All the time? So, so repurposing, like, so let, let I don't know about you, but I know that not all of my followers see my posts. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different ways that you can repurpose. You know, you can put the second sentence first or you can repurpose it as a reel, as a tweet, as a tweet, as an Instagram post, as an Instagram carousel, as a story, as a Facebook post. Like that, I, I feel like there is so many options and ways to diversify that piece of content that... Re, like reusing it all the time if it's a good piece of content is beneficial okay. and what would you say to people who just use their content to sell and it's constantly buy from us come to us subscribe with us do this with us you know there's constant like they're always in selling mode in their content across what? all boards like I'm talking yeah. you know digital I'm talking um traditional. normal traditional marketing across all boards it's always selling one I'd love to ask them how they keep their followers because I unfollow people that just sell 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 um 
But again, if you're just trying to sell without understanding your clients or providing them with value and nurturing them, you're never going to sell, whether you post all the time or not. And actually, if you were to go to the 80-20 rule, which most people I would like to think go by, you're more likely to convert than you are going 100% selling. Because one, people stop reading your messages. Two, you're actually not solving anyone's problem. You're not educating them. You're not pushing them further down that buyer journey towards your product or whatever you're trying to sell. That's what I would say. You're just, you're, you just think they're extremely product aware. And let's be honest, they're not. Otherwise, they're probably going to be your clients or mm-hmm. your customers. So by taking it back to like, provide, like creating content for people who are unaware or problem aware or like just as they go down further down that journey, like providing content for all different stages, for all different personas um, is more likely going to help you convert than just trying to sell 100% of the time. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for discussing content creation with us today we seem to have covered a huge area I mean when people speak to us I don't think they really appreciate just how much is actually involved in this one element Um, from language messaging platforms customer avatars brand personas it's it's just vast isn't it yeah it's it, it, there is so much to take into consideration, but I would say if there's one thing that they take away from this is to interview your customers and create content for every single stage of the buyer journey, not just the final purchase stage. Brilliant. Okay. That's a great takeaway to leave us with. And uh, thank you again, Jade, very much for being here. Um, we will be back next week with more Monday morning marketing. Until then, bye bye. I knew the dog had to come in there at some stage. <laughs> what do? <laughs> Barking I'm mad. <laughs> Never work with children or animals. <laughs> but he's so cute, so we'll let him away. Yeah. I tried to press the mute bu- button. It does work. I think it was me panicking, thinking, oh, my God, maybe it doesn't work. So I do apologise. Hopefully you can remove those stupid mutes.